are, are mm-hmm. caused by a uh, manifestation of the stress response. And we talked about fear, we talked about stress. And then mm-hmm. the stress response doesn't have to only be emotional and mental. It could also be physiological. But for one reason or another, your body is under some kind of stress mode. This is extremely important, Latifa, because you're 41 years old, you got fibroids, and you're pregnant. All of these mm-hmm. mean that you have a body that is under tremendous stress. That means okay. you're running higher risk not only for a difficult pregnancy, but you're, high, you're running higher risk for, every, I don't want to get into the details, but you're running some higher risk for everything yucky that you don't want to have happen. Fibroids right. are caused typically by excess estrogen, and estrogen, in addition to being a stress hormone, is also a birth control hormone, which is why typically you're not going to get pregnant, but you did, and that means you have a strong body, which is all good news. So here's what you're going to want to do, okay? You're going to want to keep every kind of stressor that's under your control away from your body, and that especially means food. Food is the, uh, the ultimate physiologic stress is the wrong kinds of food. So, number one, you've got to stay away from any foods that cause digestive problems. You've got to have had digestive issues. There's no way you didn't have digestive issues if you're 41 years old and you had fibroids. So you had to have some kind of food allergies, food intolerances. If you don't know about it, that's even more troubling because now you've got to go find out what they are. And you've got to start paying right. attention to things like bowel movements, gas, bloating, heartburn, discomfort of any kind in the digestive tract. And link those to foods and eliminate those foods. That's job number one. Job number two is to make sure that you're getting high-quality foods because now you're eating for two. Not just eating for yourself, you're eating for your baby. And really, your baby's going to get the nutrients before you are. So uh, you're going to be the one that suffers even quick, more quickly than your baby does because the fetus is the priority. So you're, all the protein, if you're not getting enough protein, what little protein you're getting is going to go to support the baby, and that means you're going to be deficient. In fact, protein is probably the most important nutrient that you need uh, being pregnant. In general, but it's not the most red important. meat protein, right? Well, you know, leaving aside this whole craziness about red meat, what do you think the difference between red meat, red meat, and white meat is? Is there any difference? To, do you think? I've heard a lot of weird things. Now, I only eat. Well, I don't want to digress too much because I want to answer your question. I got a bunch of calls here, but what's the difference? Do you think between red and white meat? There is none. The color is different, okay, okay? basically. So when people say stay away from red meat, they imply that, oh, I can eat white meat. No difference. The te- actually, obviously, there's a difference. The difference is in something called myoglobin, which is in, found in muscle, and it's not in, found in um, a certain kind of muscle that's not in white meat. But the meat itself is the same. The problem with meat is the hormones and the antibiotics and how the meat is processed, and it doesn't matter what color it is. Meat is not okay. quality food. However, there is some good things in meat, so I'm not necessarily staying away saying to stay away from meat, meat can have some value, but be careful with your meat and don't eat a lot of it. Uh, okay. If you want to eat meat, just be extremely careful with it in terms of it being organic meat and uh, non-hormone meat, non-antibiotic meat, and don't eat a lot of it because it is difficult to process. But I'm not necessarily stay, saying to stay away from meat, red or white. What you want to make sure, though, that you're doing is you're getting the kind of protein that are found in eggs and found in whey. These are specifically designed for building a baby. Dairy and eggs are designed, an egg is a baby, and whey protein and dairy protein is designed by nature to build a baby. So these are very much in your interest and in your baby's interest as long as you don't have food allergies, as long as you don't have an allergic response to eggs or to dairy, which some people do. I don't. If you don't, there's a but super I heard quality. that dairy can upset the fibroids. Only if it's, you know, please, don't get me all started on here. Okay, dairy cannot upset the fibroids. Some some of the components in dairy might be able to do that, and that's why you got to make sure your dairy is clean, and that's why it's probably not a good idea. You probably want to stick with whey protein. Dairy is not going to upset your fibroids. Your fibroids are a sign of stress, and if dairy has anything in it that exacerbates stress, then it might do it, but the dairy itself doesn't do that. So you got to make sure that you're always organic, you're always hormone-free, you're always antibiotic-free. Protein number Number one, then you want to make sure you're staying with the mighty 90. Number two, that means all of your basic nutrients. Nutritional deficiencies will be regarded by the body as a stress, and we're trying to eliminate any kind of stressors. Fats, by the way, are in particularly are particularly important for building the baby's brain and building the baby's nervous system. So make sure you're getting essential fatty acids, the ultimate EFAs from longevity or a good essential fatty acid supplement. If you have problems with fat metabolism, and many women do, and many women as they get older, 
older have problems with fat metabolism, and many women with fibroids and estrogen problems have problems with fat metabolism. You're going to have an issue around absorbing those fats and fatty vitamins, which are really important for building the baby's body. That means vitamin A, that means vitamin D, vitamin K to a certain extent, and, of course, essential fatty acids. So make sure you take all of these fatty nutrients with foods, with meals, with your digestive enzymes, and perhaps you want to throw in some lecithin granules with all fatty supplements and fatty foods, and also perhaps um, some bile salts, B-I-L-E, bile salts, and maybe pancreatin, and I'd be finishing all my fatty meal, all meals, really, with a little bit of apple cider vinegar. So you're focusing on digestive health and digestive wellness. Don't forget the Biolumin Nightly Essence and probiotics. You've got to stabilize that gut. Any issues that you have with digestive, uh, with uh, intestinal health and the health of, uh, of the bacterial flora, what they call the biome, B-I-O-M-E, the biome, that is the population of bacteria in the gut, can really cause havoc on the circulatory system as well as on building a baby. Remember, blood and nutrients are be, or oxygen and nutrients are being delivered through the blood. If you have issues with bacteria in the gut, you're not making enough, you've got the wrong kind of bacteria in the gut, you're going to have issues with the circulatory system and oxygen delivery to the baby. And by the way, speaking of oxygen, oxygen delivery, Make sure you got your deep breathing techniques. Very, very important. So much more to talk about here. Last thing I want to tell you, though, Latifah, is if your body is under stress, your fetus's body is going to be under stress. Any stress that the mother has will compromise fetal health in several ways. Number one, you're going to have a baby, a fetus, that's not going to be developing correctly. But even worse, this is very, very important, mothers-to-be and Latifa. This is extremely important. If your body is under stress, your baby will be pre disposed to a hypersensitive stress response for the rest of his life. That means any stress you're under, whether it's nutritional stress through deficiencies or emotional mental stresses, will make your baby more sensitive to the stress response for the rest of your baby's life. And that's so important. Give your gift the baby of safety and security through nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Hang tight, Latifa. A couple more things I want to tell you, and then we'll uh, take the rest of these phone calls as well. Hang tight. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Many Americans suffer from digestive problems, often totally unaware they're not absorbing essential nutrients from foods and supplements. Dr. Peter Glidden is aware of the importance of healing a damaged digestive system. Now, the product that I'm going to talk about today, Mackey Plus, and it is a combination of a superfruit, the Mackey Berry, and aloe vera juice. Now, aloe vera is a very interesting nutritional supplement to talk about because aloe vera, you know, it's the stuff that you put on your skin if you get a burn. And, man, it really knocks down the pain, the inflammation of the burn and facilitates healing. Well, guess what? It does the same thing internally that it does externally to burns. To soothe and heal your digestive system, order Mackey Plus today by calling 855-347-3696. That's 855-347-3696 or on the web at fireyourmdnow.com. That's fireyourmdnow.com. So we decided to upgrade the look of our home. You know, improve the curve appeal. We decided to add the look of stone to the exterior. We really like the stacked stone look. Yeah, but when I checked into the price, it was ridiculous. No way could we afford it. Then a friend told me about Genstone. G-E-N-S-T-O-N-E. Genstone comes in lightweight panels made of polyurethane. They've actually engineered the hassle out of installation. No mortar, no mesh. It was easy. Even I could do it. We just screwed the panels to the wall and it looks like stone. I mean, it really looks like stone. Yeah, from the box to the wall in minutes. We love the look of our home now. And Genstone is durable, comes with a 25-year warranty, and offers additional R-value for insulation. If you want the look of stone at a price you can afford, call Genstone at 855-955-STONE. Trust me, you'll save money. And you'll love the look. 855-955-STONE. That's 855-955-7866. It's time to get your green on with the great green sale from Freeze-Dry Guy. Now through St. Patrick's Day, March 17th, cases of delicious freeze-dried vegetables, green beans, and green peas are now on sale at veteran-owned freeze-dryguy.com. You don't need to be Irish to feel like you have pots of gold with a healthy supply of these delicious, nutritious green vegetables. They're perfect for your emergency preparedness needs or outdoor activities from camping to RV travel. Green beans and green peas, easy to prepare, easy to enjoy, and now easier than ever to buy. 
How about some green backs in your wallet or purse just for ordering? Act now, and Freeze Dry Guy will give you $25 in survival bucks for every case you purchase by St. Patty's Day. So get your green on now, veggie lovers. Call 866-404-3663, 866-404-FOOD, or log on to freezedryguy.com, freezedryguy.com. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products. Most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey guy. Not just an alternative to the mainstream media. We are the premier independent talk radio network. We are GCN. All right, we are back on the bright side. Queen Latifah in Missouri, mom to be. Are you there, ma'am? Yes, I am. So you get the uh, the, the theme of everything. I, I told you a bunch of stuff, but the overriding theme, the the, the theme of uh, of everything we talked about is safety in the body, nutritional supplementation to tell the body it's safe, staying away from food toxins and food allergens to tell the body it's safe, supporting digestive wellness to tell the body it's safe, and then don't forget about the real importance of oxygenation because nothing will tell the body that there's an emergency or, or its survival is being threatened faster than a lack of oxygen, and your baby is very, very dependent on, on healthy oxygenation and healthy oxygen delivery through the blood. If your baby, if you're under stress, your baby will be under stress, and your baby will be more sensitized to stress for the rest of his life. So this is so, so important. Does that make sense? You follow what I'm saying here? Any stress yes, that you have will make that your baby more stressed out, more responsive to stress, more sensitive to the stress response for the rest of the baby's life. Now, certainly, the emotional and mental aspects are important. So relaxing, listening to, you know, they do studies on music, Mozart and, and uh, relaxing music when the baby listens to relax, the fetus listens to relaxing music, the baby, the, the, uh, the babies tend to be uh, healthier. All of these are ways of telling the, the fetus that, the, ba- uh, that the, the world is safe, that the body is safe. It's protected, and all of its energy can be spent building the fetus. It doesn't, have to, it doesn't have to scrimp and save when it comes to nutrients. You want to tell the body that there is abundant nutrition, abundant oxygen, there's no threats going on, and you can do that through supplementation, deep breathing techniques, as well as mental and emotional strategies. Does that help you, ma'am? Yes, it does so much. Okay. I feel okay. better already. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. And then also, don't forget, I, I told you about the EFAs, which are important for the baby's brain. Iodine is also important for the baby's brain. Make sure you're getting enough iodine, uh, uh, among other nutrients. But iodine and EFAs are also very important. Congratulations, too. I hope everything works Thanks out. So and, and stay in touch with us. Let us know how you're doing. Okay, Latifa. Oh, I'm sorry. I just cut you off. I apologize. All right. Uh, moving on. Let's go to Don in Georgia. Welcome to the Bright Side, Don. What's up? Hey. Thank you, Ben. How are you doing today? Doing good. What's going on, man? Okay, I have a multi-stack question. I'll try to move as fast as possible because I have okay, more good. questions than you have callers. <laughs> okay. I'm dealing with um, AFib, which is, I believe, causing a frozen shoulder problem. Okay. I realize when I when I eat less food that are high uh, high density foods, yeah, that I have less problems with the AFib. I know. Now, no my kidding. Question is, yeah. Right. <laughs> my question is um, protein. Yeah. I love eggs, but they don't love me. I get crazy <laughs> gas from it. I've tried okay. the veggie. Uh, Pea proteins and stuff like that. I get horrible bloating. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if I hear that wheatgrass and rejuvelac has uh, protein in it, but I, well, I love those. I don't know if I'm getting enough protein. No, you're probably like not. It. Wheatgrass is amazing. I love wheatgrass, and it is a good source of protein, but it's not going to be enough protein. And the fact that you're having right. a problem with eggs and with, with pea protein and other sources of protein tells me that you may be malnourished. AFib is a sign of a body in distress. It's a sign that the body's not, the, the body's not getting enough blood and electrical energy is not being conducted through the heart correctly. Uh, it's linked to cortisol and stress hormones. And that stress can be, obviously, emotional and mental and spiritual. 
spiritual, but just from a physiologic perspective, it could have to do with malnourishment. And the fact that you're not absorbing protein is a real red flag that would indicate that you may be having a problem absorbing amino acids and absorbing protein. If you're not absorbing those aminos and you're not absorbing your protein, you're not going to be able to build, you're not going to be able to heal, and that is going to really put a burden on the body. So you want to focus, number one, on helping the body, the, the, the digestive system, with its role in absorption. 